Good evening, YouTube. Tire Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully, you guys have had a good weekend. So, this weekend's been relatively quiet. No severe weather to talk about, but there is increasing concern for an ice storm to develop across the southern plains into parts of the Ozarks and the Tennessee Valley later into the week, more so towards the midweek. I think Tuesday through Thursday is the area of greatest concern. So, we're going to get into, deta into the uh, details of that here. So we'll start out by actually going to the Weather Prediction Center here. And this is heading looking heading into looking into per se the Tuesday night, Wednesday morning time frame. And this is us taking a look at the probability of a tenth of an inch of ice here. This area in the blue represents an area above 50%. That area is very widespread heading in through uh, central Texas here towards parts of southern Oklahoma. And then we see a secondary region that's developed across Arkansas and has worked its way into Tennessee. At a tenth of an inch of ice, we start to really have difficulty with road travel here. It's no, the uh, salt trucks are going to have to be out in force in order to not only pre-treat the roads, but maintain the roads as there is increased potential for a lot more accidents or just instances of slip and fall. Or if you're a Tony Baker fan by some chance, and I hope you are, skid that diddly dee terrible impression but anyway we uh, have this potential increasing all throughout Tuesday night into Wednesday I think that greatest area of concern is going to be over Texas mainly we'll have to see what uh, ends up unfolding over here towards the Ozarks and towards Tennessee but we'll have to watch you guys Nashville you are in that threat too so definitely be on guard so we look towards Wednesday, the potential only increases, and then Thursday, by uh, Wednesday night into Thursday, we're still mainly going to be looking towards Texas. Central Arkansas looks like it's going to be in play now. Little Rocky might be in there as well. Memphis, we're watching you too. We'll set this back to look at a quarter inch of ice potential here. And that's going to be a key factor because once we start getting towards that quarter inch of ice concern, not only the roads do the uh, roads end up becoming a problem here, the threat of power outage goes up exponentially as well. So far, these areas right now looking at low uh, probabilities, but keep in mind we are still about two to three days out on a lot of this, so these are prone to changing. We move this forward here, if my computer will behave, and we're seeing that probability starting to increase across Texas. By the time we move it to these next two, we're going to start to see those blue those blue colors popping up where we're getting that 40 to 50 percentile. And that's where our concern is really going to increase. We get towards Wednesday night. I'd say anywhere in between Dallas and Midland is going to be an area of concern. So definitely have a plan in case your power goes out. Have a way to stay warm. Keep those water faucets dripping. And if you have any external water sources, like outside of the house per se, maybe it might be a good idea to turn those off. So, that being said, let's start to take a look at this setup here. We're going to first start out by taking a look at the surface temperatures, and then I'm going to do something a little different than what I normally do, considering the fact this is an ice storm setup. We're going to take a look at the above the uh, temperatures above the surface, mainly towards where we, we would normally talk about the low-level jet, the 850 millibars because that's a key factor in a lot of this. So we move this forward here, and I want you to keep track of this area right here. Look at where the surface temperatures are. These are two meters above the ground, so this is about where we thrive, where we uh, dwindle at every day. Throughout the next three to four days, we can clearly see these temperatures across this region are gonna be below freezing. So you would think normally, okay, these temperatures being where they are, we're going to end up getting mostly snow. And you would be in, in a normal situation, you would be right. However, when we go ahead and take a look at the uh, temperatures at just above our heads, maybe a couple thousand feet, this is where things get interesting. And this is where we start to have our issues here. Okay, so... We're changing things up here. This is the low-level jet temperature. 
or this is the temperature towards where that low level jet would normally be or the 850 millibar temperature now keep in mind this is in celsius of course we all should know that zero degrees celsius is the freezing point right so here's what i want you to keep note of zero degrees celsius is going to be this green color right here head and just below that's going to be the blue color anywhere past this green color leaning more so towards the yellow is just slightly above freezing as we can see here now i want you to watch what happens as i start to move this forward especially as we get towards tuesday here's the time frame right here this is our area where we're concerned about freezing rain right across this region we're sitting right above that freezing line i would say see the panhandle of texas right here we're sitting below freezing any precipitation that goes over this area is going to more than likely end up falling as either snow or sleet whereas over here we might have it start to fall at snow towards the higher levels but once it gets into this sector right here this will start to melt and then once it gets back to the surface it's going to fall it's going to refreeze and basically be freezing rain so this is heading into Monday, and then this area persists throughout Tuesday. It's almost like we can't get that low up that uh that little slight warm cap or warm sector right here to break right here. And this persists throughout the week. So we could have an instance where we have multiple days of freezing rain because we seem to have this moisture coming in from the Baja and the Pacific, and this is ultimately going to be what ends up causing a lot of showers and thunderstorms towards the southeast. This is also the key to our potential freezing rain scenario here. So hopefully you were following along with that because ultimately this is what the final result is going to look like as of right now. It's very funny how this uh, setup works here because the slightest little change in temperature could determine whether or not you end up getting freezing rain or just snow, sleet, etc. So we have to keep watching this extremely close, but look over here as we head towards Monday morning here. See a little bit of precip right here, mostly uh, sleet, a little bit of freezing rain potential. Very fast moving system. We see it start to set up again here towards uh, Oklahoma City, mainly east of Oklahoma City. And basically we're seeing multiple waves of this. Now this is where we start to get into a much bigger ice event right here as we heading towards Tuesday morning so we have this little plume of moisture that comes from the subtropical jet here and we end up seeing increased ice potential throughout this region right here and it's gonna come in waves when we head towards Wednesday morning the precipitation increases in intensity and coverage and as a result we end up having a much greater swath of ice develop here this isn't really a big snow producer, like I said. So the main topic isn't going to be snow. It's going to be ice. This is a setup that's almost textbook for it, I would say. And it really isn't going to be until later into Wednesday where we start to see the shift back over to rain, hopefully. Again, with those surface temperatures, a lot of that is going to still freeze on contact. And it's not really going to be till Thursday until we have any sort of relief here. Also, we have to keep in mind that there's quite a flood threat that's going to be ongoing in the south, and I might be talking about that one tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. But that's what we have going on here so far throughout the week. Let's go ahead and take a look at what our ice totals could look like here. So here we are looking at our ice potential here, and the totals, in case you haven't noticed, they look pretty intense right here. We're seeing a lot of areas where we could be seeing up to a quarter inch plus of ice. Some of these areas, this is according to the Euro right now, where we could see up to maybe three quarters of an inch of ice, if not more possibly. And this is through both regions here. Very concerning to see that. I do think the totals are slightly overdone, and you will get that with these global models. We aren't quite in range of the short range models yet, so let's not panic just yet but i would start maybe preparing because i do have pretty good confidence that this is going to occur especially once it starts by if it's going to be starting by tuesday night so to speak 
so this is what we're seeing with the uh, euro we switch it over to the canadian and it's actually a little bit more aggressive we're seeing areas where we could be seeing an inch plus really hoping this doesn't be the case but we can't rule it out if we're starting to see it on a couple of models gfs is a little less aggressive here but it's also a newer gfs run as well you're only updates every 12 hours but even so still up to half an inch of ice possible across this little swath here of central arkansas as well increased ice potential across texas and i think these totals might be a little bit underdone possibly let's hope that these totals will be a little bit closer to accurate out of the three so far then of course we'll go ahead and take a look at the blend of models here too so here's the blend of models and what we can see here is there's a bullseye over here across Texas. That definitely makes the most sense to me out of the, out of the other models that I saw here. Definitely potential for above a quarter inch of ice towards central Texas. There could be a bullseye here. I'm not entirely sold on it just yet, but this does this area does look like it goes through multiple events of um, smaller ice storm or, uh, or multiple days of ice, I should say. And as a result, the totals here should be pretty impressive here as well. Could we get to that quarter inch mark? Probability isn't high just yet, but we'll have to see how this progresses from here. And of course, we'll have to also look beyond Thursday too as, these, as this system and this plume of moisture combined with this cold continued to move off to the north and east. But these are our two main target areas. And then of course, over towards areas like Oklahoma City, your ice totals should be a lot more, um, a lot less significant, I should say. Areas a little further to the south, you're mainly going to be focused on rain, going to be a uh, rain oriented, so to speak. And then as we go towards the Ohio Valley, if you do get any sort of precip, it's more than likely going to be snow. This definitely lends itself towards being an ice storm. And then of course, over here we'll be talking about the rain threat. But that's the end of this video. If you happen to live in this region, definitely share this video to anyone that may not be knowing what's going on. Might be a good time to get to the store. Make sure that you're prepared ahead of time. Don't wait till the last minute because supplies will probably dwindle quickly, especially as this goes across the local news networks. So just make sure you have your plan, in, plan of action in place and then just execute and you should get through this just fine. That being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, of course, drop a like. If you haven't already, definitely do the double click and like and subscribe. Of course, as I said before, share the video to people that may, may be in these affected areas. And, of course, let me know in the comments if your area is at risk. Let me know what you're doing to make sure that you're prepared. But anyway, this has been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. I will see you guys in the next video. You guys take care.